Hello, today we're going to be making a half channel band. So the bottom of the band is solid and there's a channel through the top section. If I just um, switch this gems back on you'll see what that looks like with a few stones in place. So the first thing we're going to do is just start off in the front viewport. So if I could get everyone to switch to the front viewport. What we're going to do is go up to the jewelry tab and under the jewelry tab we're going to select the gauge tool. Now for your ring gauge it doesn't matter too much what size you're using but I'm using a size N. You can change it to a different size if you like. And we're happy with that. We just hit the tick check mark. Next we go to the drawing tab and we want to draw a line that goes from one side of this curve to the other. So using the line tool I want to make sure that my quad snap is active. If you look at the bottom of my screen here, the quad snap is active. I've also got my end snap active as well. So it's okay to have both of those switched on. And I'll start on one side over here and I'll click across to the opposite quadrant of the circle. Now what I want to do is just shift this up a fraction. So just going to hold down my shift button and zoom in here a little bit and I'm just going to drag this upwards just a fraction, it doesn't have to come up too far. And now I'm going to split this circle using this line that we've just drawn. So we go to the split command in our drawing tab. It's asking us to select the object to split so we click on the object which is the circle and press enter when done and our cutting object is going to be this line. Now it will give you a message at the bottom of your screen saying one curve is split into two pieces. So we don't need this line anymore, we'll just delete that for the moment and we'll go back to our perspective viewport. So if we look at our perspective view now, if we click on that curve you'll see that it is broken in two. It's highlighting just the top se section or the bottom section there. So we want to select just the top section because that's where our channel is going to go. So we we go to the jewelry tab. So we go to the channel studio. And if you have the curve selected it will display it for you. If not, you'll have to just come across it's asking to select a curve. So we click on that. And you should have a channel appear on your screen. Uh, if your channel is upside down, you can flip it the other way around, but in my case it's all, all good, so uh, I don't have to do anything here. What I'm firstly going to do is come in and adjust the size of these gems. We're going to use 1.5mm gems, and I probably need 25 of these. A bit too many. Let's have a look. That looks about right. We've got 19, 20 is probably just a fraction too close. Yeah, they're overlapping there. I'll just drop that back to 19. So we've got 19 gems. Uh, they are 1.5 mil in size. Now the other thing I want to show you is the cutter position. The cutter position, uh, it's easiest to, to demonstrate this to you probably just going to the bottom of this channel just to show you what's actually going on here just let me pan around here a bit now the cutter position determines where the groove actually sits and you can see as I move and adjust this cutter position the channel is actually moving up and down if you look over here you'll see it moving up and down so probably best to do this in the front view but I want to move this so that my stones are sitting inside so I think for this probably a cutter position about 19 is probably going to do uh, I'll leave the cutter width and height as it is we'll go across 
to adjust our channel now. So if I go back to my perspective viewport, you'll see that uh, the channel's too narrow for that those stones. So we'll open up. Uh, sorry, open up the width of the channel. I should do first. Looks about right. About 1.4. I think 1.45 is a good measurement for a 1.5 mil stone. Our channel wall thickness. I would say change it to uh, 0.8, and we'll change the depth of our channel to 0.7. And you can see now that my stones are now bumping into the thickness of the new channel there. So we'll have to adjust the height of that a bit. Looks about right, 1.7. And in this case, I'm just going to change the channel profile as well because I don't want this particular channel profile. I'm going to pick under the channel profile selector, I'm going to pick channel number 002. It's a squarish one. So you just double click over here to select a different channel profile. And once I'm happy with that, I can just say OK. So now we've created the top part of our ring, we've got to now create the bottom part of it, which is where we're going to use this bottom um, part of the circle. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, we want to create the outline of the profile that we're going to use for this ring band. So we'll come across to our drawing tab and under our line tool, just click on the down arrow there and we're going to select a polyline. Now make sure your end snap is still on, it should be on from uh, earlier. If not, just come down here and switch on your end snap. And if you can't see your object snaps, just click on the word object snap, O snap at the bottom of your screen to switch that on. And we're going to click from one side to the other side of part of the channel. We're going to click across here and down and back across. So what we're aiming to do is to create a rectangular shape that we're going to use uh, for this um, bottom part of the ring. So let me just scroll out a little bit just to show you how this is going to work. We go to the modeling toolbar at the top of your screen. We're going to select sweep one rail. Sweep one rail is the command that we run. Just click on that and it will ask you firstly to select the rail. Now the rail we're going to use is the bottom section of our ring and it immediately then asks you for the cross section so the cross section is the, the rectangle that we just made and we press enter and enter once again and you can see it's gone and built that bottom section if I just switch this back to shaded mode you'll see this a little more clearly here. So what's important here is that um, we um, we have, I'll, I'll just hide this top section of the ring. Uh, we have a, a, a surface here but it's not a solid so we need to close it uh, and make it into a solid. You can see it's hollow. So we do that by selecting the object and we'll type in cap CAP at the command line and press enter and it will close off that object. So now if I just bring back the top part of the band you'll see this a little more clearly. And if I was going to be manufacturing this uh, I could go straight to create a mesh file for this to produce on a 3D printer. So to do that we go across to the manufacturing tab and there's no need to join these at the moment. They are two separate halves, but um, when we run the STL wizard, it's going to go and create a mesh for us that will be suitable to manufacture from, and it will join those two elements for me when it creates the mesh. So I just click on the STL wind wizard. It asks me to select the geometry, which is the top, and holding down the shift button, I can select the bottom part of the ring, and select those objects by clicking here where it says select geometry and you'll see that th those top and bottoms now showing here. Now under resolution I would normally suggest selecting high is more than adequate for something like this 
and it will go away and join those elements up and allow us to um, save uh, that mesh and give it a name. I'm not going to do that in this case but you can see the mesh is there underneath. Now that we've got our mesh created uh, we've saved it as a separate file. What you can do if you like is delete the mesh that we've created here and for rendering purposes probably what you want to do uh, we'll change our, our display mode here sorry for rendering purposes you probably want to apply the same material uh, to both objects we'll just delete this curve that we originally used we don't need that anymore and this one <coughs> and this one and what we'll do is go to uh, the materials library and we'll go to the metals folder so it's the first little uh, spherical gold spherical icon here next to the RG icon and we'll go to metals the metals tab and scroll down here let's just pick I don't know yellow gold this satin finish or sandblasted finish and we can apply that to an object by just selecting it and dragging it and placing it on the area and we can do the same for the bottom part of the ring and if we're happy with that we can come across to render and in this little blue sphere the render window we can just click that and it will launch the standard Rhino rendering engine <coughs> and allows us to render that image if we wanted to email it to someone. So I could just come in here and say file, save as and I can give this document a name and save it if I wanted to. Um, if I wanted to change the colour of the stones I could come across here and very simply just by clicking in the middle mouse wheel the, the wheel in the middle of my mouse it will bring up this little menu and I can select gems and I can come across here again <coughs> and click on the gems tab here and I might pick a different type of stone so I don't know if there's a number here but pick, pick, pick another one uh, look I'll just select a ruby here and I can click that across or double click actually once I've got my gem selected double clicking on that is the same as dragging it onto the object itself and you can see they've changed to rubies now and I can again go back to my render window now and just render that view and if I'm happy with that I can say file save as and by default we save as a JPEG image you could save it in a different format but I recommend a JPEG because it's a little smaller and much easier to email to people and give it a file name and we can save that of course if I want to do that in a different viewport and let's say I want to give someone view from a different view I can change viewports here I can maximize this viewport I can switch this to my rendered mode so I can render that and click on render and I might want to send a client or a customer an email from a few different views so you could do that for each individual view and you might send a top view and a front view and a perspective view just to give someone an idea of what, what the various um, views look like. Okay, that's it for this tutorial. Thank you.